Hello fellow gamers, I'm Sojourner Kai, and in today's video we're going to show you how to play the new champion in League of Legends, Diluc, in the jungle. <laughs> Wait, oh actually, <laughs> I think I have the wrong game up. Man, sorry about that. They're just so similar in appearance nowadays that it's really hard for me to tell them apart. Let me be clear in saying that I don't hate Akshan specifically, or blame his release for everything Riot has done over the last three years. This video is more about how I've gradually gotten more and more frustrated with Riot's design choices over this period of time, and Akshan is where I've finally chosen to draw a line in the sand and talk about it. For the last three years, Riot has been designing champions that are meant to be visually appealing while gradually doing less and less in terms of creativity, let alone even trying to use the vast catalog of species of Runeterra in the game. Characters like Zoe, Seraphine, and Yumi all look like they were taken straight out of a Disney film while Silas, Set, and Yone are all shirtless buff men that belong in a film of their own. Every character in the last three years all the way back to Pike has had an overabundance in terms of their bland appearance to the point where some of the characters released in this time frame I and many others have forgotten. I mean, if we're going by play rate statistics, most people forgot that Lilia or Nico even existed. It's all too samey, too bland, like how it's just one perfect face and or body after another. Like sure, a glass of milk is pretty poggers, but you probably won't remember which glass was which if there's no variety to break them up. What's even worse to me is that there's not a whole lot of diverse terms that come to mind when it comes to describing the appearance of several of these characters. Cat. Big thighs. Mistake. And it's not like older champions are free from this design choice as well, but for one, we've grown to realize over the years that the simplistic designs of the older champions were a product of the limited resources Riot had at the time, and for two, the older champions were still divvied up by varied species between releases, and basically none of them had the Disney or Supermodel kind of look to start off with. Looking back now with the revamped artwork, yeah. Some of them have been changed to be far more attractive, like Misfortune and Nidalee, but they had other characters with different body types and personalities like Kennen and Malzahar released in between them. For the last two years in a row, starting with Kiana, every champion released has been one attractive human after another, and no I haven't forgotten about her, we'll talk about that when we get there. Sure, some of these characters come with very fun kits that are oftentimes meta-defining, set on release. Aphelios on release, Samira, etc. Each of these champions have had some relative time in the limelight, especially in pro play, and then once Riot has had their fun, they nerf them into the dirt. This becomes incredibly frustrating, because to me it means that playing against the champion becomes a living hell, since who on earth thought it was a good idea to give an ADC extra range, CC, lifesteal, an ungodly attack speed steroid, and wave clear with bonus damage. Aphelios came out, Riot said, that was fun, and then they shot him. Then after they nerfed the champion, all the people who thought the new champion was fun and decided to main it have to suffer for Riot's short-sightedness. A lot of champions being released now are too good at several things at once, which contributes to the power creep that has been rapidly devouring the older champions in the game. The reason why you see so many people begging for reworks and even going as far as to design their own in some cases is because of how many new champions can do what they do, but a zillion times better. Gwen is an incredibly powerful and irritating top laner who deals in magic and true damage, making her a nightmare to duel especially as a tank because of the percent health damage and healing she does with her passive. Malphite is just a rock. And he's easily beaten by an anime girl wielding a pair of scissors just because she does more. With Akshan, it's hard to feel like a lot of the ADCs are the go-to anymore as well, since a lot of his kit borrows key aspects from other champions and meshes them all together while effectively removing the nuance that those other champions have. Why play Lucian anymore when Akshan removes the need to weave spells in between autos while getting the same passive effect? Why play Vayne anymore when Akshan does bonus damage without taking up an ability slot? Why play Quinn anymore? Quinn fucking sucks. <laughs> and that's just on his passive. His Q is a Sivir Q that applies his passive stacks. His W is a stealth move that would make Twitch jealous. His E is quite possibly the highest mobility spell given to an ADC period. And his ult is a shorter, albeit better, Caitlyn and Lucian ult that you don't have to aim. Each of these champions here have abilities that are similar to what Akshan has, but none of them have this powerful of a combination. Sure, Sivir is way clear of the champion TM, but she doesn't have an ult that lets her lock on, reveal targets, and deal bonus damage to targets based on missing health, including structures. Sure, Lucian is known for his fast and aggressive mobility, but he doesn't passively get mana regeneration when he presses an ability, nor does he get his passive for free. 
Twitch gets stealth, but he has nowhere near the mobility, the duration, and he can also miss auto attacks during his ultimate. For those reasons, playing Akshan is a no-brainer in most comps. Not sure if you want to play Lucian or Sivir? Well, hell, just play Akshan, because he's both of those champs and better. By far the most controversial part of this champion's kit is his W passive, wherein he gets to revive dead teammates so long as he slays their killer. That, and he gets bonus bounty gold for killing them. League is currently in a place that heavily favors snowballing, which leaves very little in the way of comebacks, especially in low elo. Ever wonder why Draven players can completely roll a match, or why Katarina getting one kill bot lane signals the end of times? Well, that's because of the snowball. Now for the case of Akshan, imagine that you're playing him in bot lane. Both sides trade supports, and Akshan being the champion that has the better kit kills the enemy ADC. Now not only is Akshan ahead by 300 gold from getting the kill on his opposing ADC, which is normal, but he gets bonus gold from his W passive, and he instantly revives his support, meaning that his support can get back to lane 15 seconds faster, giving them a distinct experience, lane, and gold advantage. Even worse still, if that support is a support that can roam well, they're given the luxury of time to roam mid since that time that they would have otherwise spent dead has been completely nullified. League of Legends is a game that's entirely about timing and counting. Time your rotates and engages with your team. Count the number of players you see on the map before moving somewhere. If you want to get an objective, killing opponents leaves you with plenty of extra time to siege a tower or take a dragon. Akshan's W passive completely ruins that timing, because even if you end up trading 3 for 1 in a teamfight later, if Akshan kills the one that killed 3 of his teammates, they all revive instantly, and that advantage that your team works so hard to get for an objective is gone. There's a reason why the summoner spell revive was removed from the game, mostly because it was a meme, and it should stay that way. I think that Riot should not be giving an ADC that has high on hit damage, stealth, mana regeneration, wave clear, an ult that can reveal targets at a range that rivals Caitlyn while hitting Lucians without having to aim, and high mobility, a revive and bonus gold mechanic. This is already too much. The worst part about him is that his kit looks cobbled together on paper. I'm writing this as he was released, and I'm sure that players will get the hang of him eventually, but I fail to see what synergies he has or what role he's supposed to fulfill. For example, Camille is an aggressive bruiser whose kit centers around a mantra of fuck you in particular. Her passive protects her from return damage, her Q does massive single target damage, her W slows targets at a distance, her E lets her gap close onto a target and stuns them if she lands it, and her ult targets one person and challenges them to 3 minutes in the ring. Or how about we take a more recent champion as an example, Kiana. Kiana is a weird skirmisher combo assassin that, if you press buttons in the right order, can delete any squishy target off the face of the planet. Her Q tosses out a blade of damage, her W makes her hop and grab an element to cast that has differing effects, her E is a dash that auto aims her Q, and her O is a tool that easily sets up the rest of her kit as well as her team. Aphelios, well, Aphelios has synergies, but I don't have time to talk about all of them. Akshan doesn't have that kind of clear identity or champion specific synergies aside from being able to swing on his grappling hook while firing his ult, which is cool, I guess. Otherwise, he feels like a jack of all trades and an unholy combination of ideas that feel like they could have worked better in other champion kits, either currently existing or future ones. He might be underwhelming now, but I'm worried that this level of overloading kits has become the gold standard for quite some time now, and it's causing older champions to fall severely behind because of their more simplistic and straightforward kits. Akshan has all of the things that I've mentioned, while Udir can run fast for a period of time and slaps things four different ways, one of which you will never use depending on your build. Overloaded kits like this also always end up in a nightmare position of being far too strong or far too weak depending on the patch. Akali's reworked kit does less than what Akshan does, and yet despite the fact that she's been nerfed repeatedly, she still finds ways to run games over. And heck, maybe by the time that this video is released, I'll be eating my words and Akshan will find some inherent synergy and won't be preferable to a lot of ADCs. Regardless, if this is the bar that Riot has to hit every time they release a champion now, then I'm worried that champions designed hardly even 4 or 5 years ago will begin to show their age with new releases, and that's a shame because I like a lot of champions from that time period. Speaking of design, can we talk about the appearances of the champions released in the last 2 years? We have Just a Cat, 5 shirtless buff dudes, 3 supermodels, 1 chick with thighs that could crush my trachea just by looking at them, mm. 1 haunted doll from Resident Evil 8, and 3 slender female characters which Let's check with the judges. Yep, they're illegal. If I've learned anything about League of Legends is that they, more than any other IP, have the potential to create inspiring designs and creatures that we have never seen before. 
That creativity feels wasted when every champion for the last almost three years is designed to be a picture-perfect Disney character or attractive in some way. My friend Nicky Boy even pointed out that he couldn't tell who this champion was by just looking at the icon because you could probably guess Zyra, Ash, Lux, Kale, Evelyn, or LeBlanc, and you'd be dead wrong because it's fucking Cassiopeia. Now, to be clear, I don't mind attractive champions. Heck, I don't even mind human champions, like how Talia and Alawi are among some of my favorite champions to play. I mind when they usurp and take priority over more unique designs and are released with little break in between. Riot has admitted that monster champions are harder to release because they have tougher kits to design, but Riot, you, you do realize that you have the power to change that, right? Imagine if Aurelian Soul was released with a kit more like Lux's. He'd be the most popular mid lane mage out there. Instead, champions like Aurelian are released with niche kits that are hard to play, and then they're punished when the limited player base finds out how to play them, and then Riot wonders why nobody plays monstrous champions after they've been nerfed into obscurity while being eclipsed by new releases that do what they do, but better. I care about this because League of Legends has been a part of my life for a while, and I do still enjoy the game when it's not made intolerable by the trashiest attitudes known to man. So when this game that I've seen makes massive changes over its lifetime, then decides that they're going to throw caution to the wind and design champions around a philosophy that's clearly in it for their looks while giving them kits that are meant to be flashy and attractive so that they garner player interest before nerfing them or removing certain aspects, the only way I can describe it is to say that it feels lazy. Laziness is something that I'd never expect from a multi-billion dollar company that runs one of the largest esports scenes and gathers sponsorships from some of the world's largest mega corporations. They know what they're doing for sure, but as a player, I hate the feeling like I'm being pandered to instead of being given new ways to play this age-old game. Mark my words, in the near future, around six months or so from this video's release, Akshan will be overpowered and have at least one of his passives removed or changed. He just does too much right now. And that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. If you want to catch me elsewhere on the internet, I have a Discord server, Twitter, and Twitch account, all three of which you can find in the description below. And as always, safe travels and goodbye.